this is Julia Waldorf, juliawaldorf.com. So, how to buy a home? Well, I mentioned when you get a loan, um, one of the first things you're going to ask is, how much money do you have? <laughs> how long have you been on your job? Hopefully it's two years. You have to be two years into whatever line of business you're in for two years straight, hopefully at the same job. But if not at the same job, um, same type of job, maybe a different establishment, but you didn't miss a beat a day or two because maybe you have gotten a raise or a better job somewhere else, which makes sense. Um, and they also ask you, what's your credit? So and then they say, what's your credit? What's your FICA score? F-I-C-A, FICA, not FICO, but FICA. Well, where does FICA score come from? Well, let me tell you what I remember. FICA score, a long time ago, they used to just pull your credit and when they pull credit, they pull it from three credit bureaus throughout the country here. And the three credit bureaus keep track of you. And um, of, you know, someone complains, Sears is a good one. $5 late charge. Watch out for Sears. They will do that to you. <laughs> and they'll put it on your credit if you don't pay that. And then that'll give you um, a ding on your credit. This is a long time ago. And then, you know, you just pay that $5. Maybe you didn't even know about it. it wasn't, you didn't even know it was on your credit, but you pay it and then it clears it off the credit report. It's a little different now. They came up with FICA score, oh, when was that? Oh, let's go by my children's age. Austin was probably about seven, eight years old. So it was probably about 2017, 18, 19, 20 years ago. And the new whisper, I used to hang out with my lender all the time. Um, Candy was her name. And she's like, Julia, there are meetings on this FICA score. We don't think it's gonna work, this is crazy. And she told me about the first meeting they went to on it. And they said, no recordings, no cameras, no, this is confidential, no one can say anything but anything, this is a closed door meeting. We are coming up with this FICA score stuff. And the way they do FICA score is they have this computer system where they keep track of people by their social security number of how many times they've been married. If you've been married all your life, you're more stable because they did this study than you would be if you've been married and divorced three times. <laughs> or um, do you golf? Or uh, where do you live? Or how long have you went to school? Or um, I'm surprised she literally told me that. I mean, how many times you've been married? Or you know, things that you c wouldn't think would be in, in the equation, but there's, they say it's this equation of, you know, that they use. Well, the equation is they look at your lifestyle and they determine by giving you points plus and minus. If you golf, you might get plus. If you play baseball, you may or may get a minus. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know what the what gives them pluses and minuses, um, but that's how it works. And that's what your FICA score is. And so the higher the FICA score, the better. It's this equation they come up with by pulling your credit report and they have all the information on you ready and they, boom, come up with a FICA score. And mainly, mainly it's from the, you know, if you were late on your Sears, well, your FICA score may be, you know, 680, but if you have a late charge of $5, which I literally have a deal going on that way, which she's not guilty of, but they did this to her. Um, if you have a late charge of $5, then on your credit, because they reported it, her, you know, FICA score went from 680 to 650, I think it was, literally within a, a two week period. And that meant to her that her interest rate was going to be higher, which will cost her about $100 more a month. Yes, sirree, because that FICA score went down because you have a late pay and it was recent, and um, which is crazy. That's actually pretty crazy because this poor lady actually has excellent credit. And um, to have a late pay on anything is ridiculous. So, um, so she'll have to dial into the three credit bureaus, show her paper trail saying that she did pay this late. There was no late. There's no reason for the late charge. She does have a paper trail for it. To clean that up, she sends it off to all three credit bureaus saying, I dispute this and gives it to them. And then they'll approach the company that gave her that and say, hey, take that off because we have proof that she doesn't, wasn't late on it. She has a paper trail on here with a copy of the check showing that she paid on time. 
and the bank statement showing it was cashed on time. Um, so you better erase it or we'll give you a penalty. You'll have a, we'll have a problem. And they usually do drop it off. Drop it off the credit, credit bureau. I've literally had somebody, just for your information, had a tax lien on their name for, gosh, 10 years. And it was a tax lien. Um, a fraudulent tax lien, it didn't make sense, tax lien, and um, it was on his credit report, and he made a dispute against that in writing, and lo and behold, IRS couldn't come up with the legitimate reason why it's on there, and they dropped it off. If they don't respond within so many days, I don't know if it's 30 days or 60 days or whatever it is, but I do know the timeline went by, and it was dropped off, and his FICA score went up. And so that's what FICA score is all about. Um, so pay your bills on time, you'll be all right. Um, be it you get a divorce, make sure you pay your bills. <laughs> and if you golf, well, hallelujah. Maybe your FICA score will be higher. I'm not sure, but from what I understand, if we really knew what was behind that, we'd probably not like it. But what can we do about it, right? That is what it is. So have a great day. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand FICA a little bit better when you go for this loan app. And um, thanks for watching. Julia Waldorf, juliawaldorf.com. Ciao, ciao.